hello gorgeous hi everyone and welcome back to my channel in this week's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys my manicure secrets for how to get your manicure to look its best and stay looking its best aka chip free for at least seven days sometimes even up to 10 days sometimes even up to two weeks i wouldn't recommend going past that but we're gonna get into it it's my eight dollar secret that will literally change everything you don't even have to just have long nails like this it works for any nail length so let's get into my eight dollar secret <laughs> fake nails fake nails are your friends press on or some people just call them glue on nails i just call them press on nails these are actually so much more versatile than you vers versatile 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 you know what i mean a lot of people look at these and they really only think of them as for when you want to have long nails but let me tell you something you can just cut these down to whatever size you want and they will literally be such a lifesaver for whatever reason when you paint your natural nails it somehow seems that your nails will chip doesn't matter what nail polish i'm using some do chip more or less than others obviously doesn't really matter the top coat again some do help a bit but no matter what in a few days your nails will chip typically people see these kinds of nails and they think that they're only for when you want to have really long nails which is great you know if that's what you want to do this will save you so much money because going and getting like fake acrylic nails will cost i mean at least in new york it'll be like 60 70 80 sometimes even over a hundred dollars depending on where you're going what you want to do like it could cost a lot of money and most of the times it takes up a lot of time the small talk god forbid you bump into people that you don't really want to see like i just I'm a little bit of an introvert. I like to avoid human contact as much as possible. A lot of people will sometimes do like a gel or just short and that's still, it's really expensive and I just don't really see the point. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of one of those people where it's like, if I can reach it myself, I do it myself. So I did a video a few years back where I talked about how to get faux acrylic nails and Everything in that video has pretty much remained the same, but the products that I use are a little bit different because the nails that I used to use, um, after I made the video, they sold out and they stayed sold out for, I think like, it was a long time, it was like months. And then they brought them back and I feel like the quality just wasn't there. So I switched over to these. I had originally done a video using these nails for kind of like a more vintage kind of look. Like I used these like sort of almond shaped ones i think they're called stiletto but they're like a stiletto short i'll put links to everything in the description box down below for you i do have some tips and tricks for those of you who struggle from like how do i paint one hand and then the other hand i got you girl just stay tuned i personally really like these which i first purchased on accident because they were like wait they were like way too long when i got them and i was like oh i think i picked the wrong thing i didn't throw them away though because i was like maybe i'll use them for halloween or something but i'm so glad that i did because these actually ended up being the perfect nail to work with for when i want to go for this look which is kind of like a basic square look when you first put these on you will literally look like maleficent i'm not joking it looks exactly like maleficent or something like it's way too long really pointy it's just not my look. Instead, I go for putting these on and just cutting them down to whatever length I want. But how do you make sure that all the nails, if you're going for longer nails, if you're going for short nails, it's pretty much easy to get everything to be about the same length. I recommend using a standard nail clipper. So that way when you stick the nail in and it hits that little bar that's right here, clip and then put it back in, do another clip. It really helps you to measure things out and make sure that every nail is the exact same length so that gives you a really nice uniform look for those of you who struggle with painting both hands look it does get easier with practice but I have two tips for you one if you really want to like learn how to do it a lot better and the other one for like pretty much if you just really can't figure it out <laughs> okay so the first thing that you want to do is whatever your dominant hand is when you switch over to your non-dominant hand a lot of the times what people end up doing is they try to do all the work with their non-dominant hand and that could be really tricky. Instead, you wanna keep your non-dominant hand pretty steady and just do like a basic movement, like an up and down and use your dominant hand, which you have much more control over to guide the nail. You see what I mean? So don't sit there trying to like get around and do the whole thing. 
just keep this one simple. Keep your non-dominant hand simple. Let your dominant hand do most of the work and the guiding. If this is still like really challenging for you, what I do recommend you can do is you can take Q-tips, you can take popsicle sticks, toothpicks, use the ends of your makeup brushes, whatever you want. Just get some sticks out or something. Or you can even do like a double stick tape, put it on like a some kind of a flat surface, put the nails on there, have them already cut and shaped. Again, if you're measuring them out from ahead of time, it's really easy to do that. Just, you know, make sure that they fit each nail, keep them in order, just keep it organized and to the point. And you could just paint them like how you would just paint anything let them dry and then go ahead and glue them on. But I will say that you wanna make sure that you're not using too much nail glue because if your nails are already painted and you put too much glue, when you press down, the glue can sometimes seep over the edge and kind of mess up the polish. It's not the end of the world. Typically, if you just went over with like a clear polish, like a clear coat again, it would take care of it. I've had these nails on for, uh, let's see now, it's about 10 days, if not maybe more. I think I've had them on for exactly 10 days at this point um, and they're about ready to come off but they still look really really great and presentable and they cost me nothing so there's that. A really big thing though is because a lot of people ask okay what happens when you want to remove them? The removal process is very important because a lot of people have the question of like doesn't it damage your natural nail? It doesn't have to if you are really patient with the removal process. You don't want to be like pulling and peeling off your nails. You definitely want to take your time with the removal process. Put something on Netflix, listen to my podcast, listen to something, do something, keep yourself busy and occupied for a good 30 minutes. But you want to just cut the nails down, remove the polish, and then take 100% acetone. It doesn't really matter what the brand is because they're all pretty much the same. Sometimes I like doing um, one of these tubs, the Pro Strength, like 100% acetone, but in a tub. With this kind of thing, you have to kind of go one nail at a time and just sort of soak it and swish it around. It is really oddly efficient in a way. Sometimes I actually prefer this, uh, but you can always do a little of this in a glass bowl. Make sure it's a glass bowl. This melts plastic. So put a little bit in like a glass bowl that you don't care about. You can go to the dollar store and find one soak them there and then just like wipe it off typically I just do a soak and just kind of hang out there so take your time with the removal process I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you have any questions let me know in the comment section down below links to everything plus a blog post that kind of breaks things down really simply and to the point will be in the description box down below so be sure to check that out if you like this video hit the like button and as always I look forward to talking to you again very very soon Self-love is truly a balance between compassion and discipline towards yourself. Kind of like what a really great parent would do. And in many ways, I feel like self-love can pretty much just be chalked up to learning to be the parent to yourself that you probably needed when you were a child.